Hello there, Aaron, Millie behind the camera. Hi. Welcome to House of Haha. Ha. In this video, we're going to review a campground we stayed at this last night. This is the Johnson's Shut In Campground. This is in Missouri near Scenic Highway 21 and County Road N. In the Johnson Shut In State Park. In the Johnson Shut In State Park. And it's a, uh, here's the basic information on it. We, we really enjoyed it. Um, it. Like all the other state parks, it runs 13 for basic sites, um, 16 for hookups, like for um, electric water. Electrical, thank you, electric, and then 19 for your full hookups after that. It comes with a uh, fire pit, uh, a, um, a bench, and um, as you can see, <laughs> as Melody's showing you, a big concrete slab. Now, if this looks like it's a new campsite and looks like it's been, you know, not too old, there's a reason for that. Why is that, Melody? Well, in 2005, the campground that was originally here, located more in the valley, mm -hmm. was destroyed by a reservoir breach in the, of the Tomsack Reservoir nearby here. And it, it was like 1.3 billion gallons of water wow. scoured a mile plus path, just taking out a lot of the park features, including the campground. So they moved the campground, well, recreated the campground to here. the Goggins Mountain area of the park. And that's why it all looks so nice and new. And probably why they put these, all those concrete pads down because there's a floodplain nearby and it might just be for to preserve everything even though it's it makes sense. not the nicest area if you're like wanting to be a part of nature. But they do have a walk-in mm -hmm. area. Although I will say the walk-in area also has a wooden platform too. It's not concrete, but it's a wooden platform. Oh, and one thing about that too is that they have mm -hmm. carts available that you can like to carry your gear in so you don't just have to never seen that anywhere. That's almost a hotel like feature that they have available. So that's that's a definite that's a definite new one for us. Well and speaking of hotel like features, they have something called camper cabins here, mm -hmm. which is like little cabins that are you know, it has like a microwave and like a couple of different ways air, to cook. Air conditioning, I air believe. Air conditioning and stuff like that. Uh, some of them have bathrooms, some of them don't. It's like seventy five to eighty dollars, so that's why I say hotel like because you're paying almost as much as if not more than a hotel for something like that. But and you have to bring your own sheets. Place. So So there you go. So and kitchen utensils. Very unique campground, would you agree? Yep. So our campsite is fairly standard for what you'd find here in Loop Four, which is one of the basic campgrounds for thirteen dollars over. Melody will pan over and you can kind of see through over here on the side this is what the other campsite looks like and it's for these ones over here they're all about the same so there is well over a hundred different campsites throughout the entire park it is very very large there's five loops in all um, we were also as far as the shade goes per campsite because you know, that's an important thing for us when we set up our where we're going to set up there is trees around them but i wouldn't call it a lot of shade so maybe at one part in the day you might have shade whereas later on your tent might be directly in the sun so, and it's pretty sunny during like the hottest part from sunny. noon to four so enjoy um, <laughs> a couple other amenities that we noticed they do mention they have a laundry here um, they do have a little camp general store um, however, the Camp General Store, um, we're here between a Monday and Friday, um, is closed. So apparently it's only open on the weekends, which is kind of weird. Um, it claims to have Wi-Fi, as I said. We were not able to locate the Wi-Fi. It might be over near the General Store, but we it couldn't It says get... it's at the General Store okay. and at the Black River Center, but we, I, I didn't see it when I was looking no. for Wi-Fi. So I don't know if they turn it off or maybe you have to be inside the store and we couldn't get inside the store. So if you're here Monday through Friday camping, be prepared for not having those things available. Or call call they, and see what the deal is. Exactly. Depending on what time of the year it is. Maybe we're just here later in the season. We're later in the season, but it's still it's prime September. time. It's not the pro uh, Their main time is through October 31st. So it's late, but it's not the end of prime season. At the general store, you can also rent bicycles. So if you want to go cruising you know around the area and things like that is available to you which is a nice little amenity what else amenities do they have that we can get we can mention to people i mean the store supposedly has groceries and ice which would be pretty nice um the laundry you already said one of the most i guess uh unique things about this park is the swimming areas that's yes. what shut-ins means it's always I guess. we came here basically because we went to another campsite and someone came over and was like, would you like to know the greatest swimming area in all of Missouri? And we're like, why would we say no to that? Yes. Right. And then they told us about this place. Now, you would, a shut-in, we tried to look it up because we're like, is that just a place where people go, they don't want to go outdoors because they want to stay in their house all day? And they're like, no. A shut-in apparently is where a river goes through a gorge and the... Uh, 
either it comes down through like slides and waterfalls or it's a place it's a good place to go swimming is the best thing we've been able to interpret they're not really clearing what a shut-in is but this is one of the finest examples in all yes. of missouri now <laughs> they're clear the, about that <laughs> the swimming area is not actually here in the campground it's at the black river center which is about i don't know maybe a half mile or so you know from here down the road uh, where the main office is and you go down park over there and you can um, walk i think about a quarter to a half Sorry. mile from there to actually get to the swimming hole there's also a lot of bugs we were not able to see the swimming hole even though that's why we came here because they don't allow pets nope. in the swimming pole or swimming hole or even on the path there they also don't allow any um, disposable drink containers or food so yeah, so with Grimlock and all that sort of stuff, it was not something we were able to do because it is well over 80 you know, and 90 degrees here and we don't want our dog to die in the car. So we hear it's nice, but we didn't personally get to check it out this time. Maybe another occasion we'll get to. Um, insects, I guess to let you know, since Melody, you can hear, are kind of having to swat the flies away. They got little bees, they got flies. They won't get off even though you blow them. Like, uh... there. They also have... Um, which are called walking stick bugs. If you are not familiar with these, like you grew up in a different part of the country like I did and did not experience these things, they're basically a bug about yay big so that looks like a stick that walks. It's not yours getting bigger. It's not really that big. It's like it's four like to this. six inches. It's like, yeah. There's a lot of them and they're a different color than I've seen before, but they keep trying to crawl on us and anything that's light colored, they're not really blending in very well, these are I'm gonna not tell them. smart bugs as far as I can tell. They're <laughs> fairly stupid. This is why they are camouflaged, because apparently they'd be eaten because they just walk up right to anything. So walking stick bugs, they do have those here. Um they have those creepy looking centipede things. Yeah, millipedes. But I, mean, I don't did they say mill I don't know, they have thirty to thirty. 31 sets of legs. I can't remember big, which what they're called. And they got a bunch of legs. Aaron and saw I've one. Seen them, I've they seen also have ticks and chiggers and mosquitoes, especially through October, it said. Oh. Uh, we haven't had a lot of problems with them. They seem to be dusk and dawn mosquitoes, and we haven't put ourselves in a real area to be bothered by ticks. That's true. Um, this is a bee bear aware area. Oh, sort of. They're they not say, really clear about that. No, but they say a bear has been seen in the area. It's, we're talking black bears again, not grizzlies. So um, you want to do keep your campsite clean, basic bear precautions. There is no bear boxes or anything like that. Like they're not doing anything to heightenly make sure to protect from bears, but they just say there is out here. I'm assuming there's probably raccoons around here too, you know, things like that. They're saying the bear, act or bear population and activity is increasing in this area, so it's probably, they haven't been a real nuisance yet, but they've probably sighted some, but this is all just supposition because we, we could have easily come here and not known anything about the bears. I just had went and read all of the literature at yes. the at one of the bathhouses. Which so. is something else to mention. When we first got here, we had a weird experience. Now we got here again on a Monday. We roll into the campground probably about noonish, one o'clock, and we come to the front check-in area, and where normally someone you'd pay for your fee to come inside here and get all that sort of stuff. There was no one there, and there was no indication they were going to be there. So they were closed Monday through Friday. Only someone's going to be there on the weekends. There was a phone number to call, but then they tell you on there that the only available phone line is to use for AT and T. And we don't have AT and T. We have T Mobile, Sprint, and but we found a two foot US spot. Cellular. When we moved our car around, we we're able to make a quick phone call to call over the place to find out where the Black Canyon Center or Black River Center was. And, um, and basically someone was supposed to be here by three o'clock. They said they'd be over here if we pick our campground out. Someone would be around to meet us then. Once we got set up, we were here. No one showed up until like, I don't know, was it eight o'clock? Something like that. The host, the host finally came around. Rolled around in their little uh, cart and went, checked us in basically via our campsite. So. You want to go check out the uh, shelter and the bathrooms? Yep. Let's go take a peek at some of the amenities over there. Let's go. Okay. So. This is the bathrooms over here, as you can see. Men and women's, each one is a private stall. It's a bit dark. I don't know if it's got a little light sensor or something that comes on. It has a light, but some of them are really dingy in the concrete nature of them. So all they can really see amplifies that. flush toilet, sinks, little changing area. So as far as what it has inside here, it's pretty nice for a bathroom. It's, as Melly said, dungeon-y, you know, when it's set up. But, <laughs> You know, it's much better than we're normally dealing the with. The first one I went in, the light barely worked at all. It was really dark. So. Let's show you the shower. All right, so here's one of the basic showers you can check out. Again, a little dark. Bench, um, it's free, doesn't cost anything. Big plus on that. Adjustable hot and cold water. It has an actual like shower head on it. Water pressure was really well. The hot water came on pretty quickly. Um, shower curtain. 
He has a shower curtain. So all the basic kind of stuff you need. There seems to be at least three showers, like this one on this loop, plus a family size shower, which is like twice the size of this one. Plus it has a bathroom and a toilet and a sink in that as well for whole families to use. Which well, is it plus. says family size. There's only one shower head though. And yeah. I will say that it seems like every single person I've seen here is using that yeah. one and several people are smoking in it. Or, so I don't know if you want your kid in there. Missouri likes to smoke a lot, I'm noticing. This is just an observation. I don't know if it's true, but we seem to go a lot of places with people puffing away. Let's get out steamy in here. All right, let's go check out the uh, shelter. Oh, goodness. So here's the shelter area that it comes in the loop. It's got a couple benches table, thing for barbecuing. It's got a plug outlet, nice big shaded area. So it's also handicap accessible. So a nice little area if you just want to hang out from campsite, do pickups or maybe group activities, it's available here. Now there's one little bit of interesting fact we've learned about a lot of the parks out here in Missouri. A lot of the land for setting these place ups were donated, which there's an interesting story behind that. Well, I mean, not behind the donation necessarily, no, well, but the land park. was originally settled by the Johnston family that it's named after, although they dropped the T eventually out of their name. Mm -hmm. And three generations of that family lived and worked on this land until moving away. And um, there's actually a cemetery in the park where 36 members of the family are buried. I'm like losing my camera. And then a guy, um, I forgot his name, but it's like... A, Deloge or something, yeah, or no, Joseph Deslage. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but yeah. he purchased all this land just to donate it. He was a resident of St. Louis and he donated it to the state, so it's pretty nice. So we hope you enjoy this video. We really we think this is a beautiful campground. It's got a lot of unique things. It's very good size. It has all the amenities. Oh, a laundry. That's what I forgot to mention. You laundry said it earlier. Okay, I've already said it and that's a plus. But anyway. I do think they should charge you a little less on the weekdays if they're not going to have all their services open. But you'll be very much private and alone because even though these are wide open campsites, we barely see anybody in here. So. That's true. So to buy a little bit of confusion, we, we did enjoy our time here. We hope you find this video helpful. We hope you enjoyed our experience that we're sharing with you. As far as going, you know, this checking this place out, leave a comment if you've been here before. Any thoughts or questions else you might have about it if you've been here before. And as always, have a reasonable day. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for updates we put every week so you can follow our adventure around the country and get more information about a couple camping across America. Go to houseofhaha.com to help support our channel, buy some original art and t shirts, and go to havearegionalday.com where you can find out how you can become part of the book we're writing about the adventure. Don't forget to give us a like.